Are you struggling at homeschooling? Are you looking at the year ahead and thinking, Oh no, I've got to make this one more productive or I'll pull my hair out? Don't panic! I'm a homeschooler who's been at this for a long time and I've got some ideas that will help. I'm Shannon Germain and this is Nix the Norm. I'm doing a series of homeschool reviews and pointers to help all of you who are suddenly finding yourself homeschooling. So please be sure to hit that like button and be sure to subscribe because I've got a lot more content coming your way. But today, with the new year upon us, I thought I'd help you out with some ideas that can help make your 2021 a lot more productive and keep you and your kids a lot happier than you might have been in 2020. I've got a ton to tell you, so I'll just jump right in. Tip number one, you need a village. That's right. You know that saying about it takes a village? Well, it's spot on when it comes to homeschooling. I'm not telling you to turn to other people to teach your kids at all, though it actually can help, and I'll talk to you more about that later on. I'm just saying that you need a good support system around you of other homeschooling families so that you can pick their brains for ideas about curriculums and also so that you don't feel like you're going at it alone. I know, it can be hard to find other homeschoolers. I'm lucky. I live in a well-populated area that has a really diverse homeschooling crowd. So we get ideas and support from people who are doing this for all sorts of different reasons. And it really does help to hear different perspectives. So when you're trying to find your village, so to speak, don't always just look for homeschoolers who are doing the same types of things you are. You want to hear from everyone. Because honestly, that's the best way to build a really solid curriculum and have social experiences that will prepare your kids for the real world. So you might be thinking, that sounds really nice, but how do I do it? This is one area where your computer or smartphone is going to be your best friend. We found incredible groups on Facebook especially, and if you hate social media of any form, then at least do a Google search for homeschooling groups or co-ops out there. But truly, I hope you'll reach out to a lot of them, and not just one, because they usually have a specific theme to them. Like they might be religious or secular, or for kids with ADHD or other learning challenges. Or they might be unschoolers or de-schoolers, or all follow the same curriculum. And you want to hear from all sorts of homeschoolers, because not all the ideas you'll hear might work for your kid. But you can pick and choose what you use from all the ideas you hear. And frankly, being a homeschool parent is hard. And you need support, just like your kids do. That brings me to tip number two. Keep your kids social. Really social. I know this can be hard when maybe you've bought a certain curriculum and it keeps your kids so busy. But really, socializing with other kids, I think, is critical. In fact, one of the reasons I started this vlog was because I think a lot of people think that homeschoolers are a bunch of antisocial recluses. Uh, no. A very firm no. Because I have friends who are in public and private school, and frankly, most of my homeschool friends are every bit as social as the other kids are. So how do you keep your kids social? Easy. The same way I just told you to keep yourself social and build your support network as a homeschooling parent. Find co-ops, groups, and other social networks. But I'll even tack on a bonus one for you. Get your kids in some classes. There are tons of homeschool classes out there. So if your kid is interested in, say, gymnastics, just hit Google up for homeschool gymnastics classes, or art, or soccer, or anything. I've even taken jujitsu and woodshop classes. There are tons out there. And if you can't find any, reach out to places that cater to the public school crowd and ask them if they'd be interested in starting a homeschool class. 
because if you can drum up a few more students, most of them are more than happy to open an hour early and squeeze in an all new homeschool class because it helps them pay the bills. We've done this numerous times. I also strongly encourage you to get them in some classes that take place in a classroom setting because it will help them in case they want to go back to brick and mortar school or when they go to college. And if you can't find or create homeschool classes, no worries. Just sign them up for the same after school classes and camps or teams that the public and private school kids go to. Most of them don't care where or how you school. They just want your money. So don't limit yourself to homeschool activities. Also, look for groups that meet at parks or create your own group for meetups like laser tag or card games. I'm not saying that staying social will always be easy, but it is very possible. And once you find your social network, then it's really a breeze to start up new classes and meetups with them. Tip number three, don't get locked into a curriculum if at all possible. I know, I know. You might have forked over a ton for a full year of curriculum already. Or a lot of you might have turned to homeschooling because your school started offering options for it when the pandemic hit. So in those cases, you might be stuck. But if at all possible, don't get locked into anything for too long because your kids will change, their interests will change, and you will change. You might be doing one of the curriculums I've already reviewed on YouTube and be thinking, this stinks. It just doesn't have to be that way with homeschooling. One thing I've learned is that there are so many options. I've always chosen to attend some kind of accredited program just because I don't want the headache of trying to convince a college that I really did learn stuff. But I've done three of them so far. And I've also sampled about two or three more. So I'm telling you that even if you want an accredited school, there are still tons of options out there. I'm gonna put a short list of some down in the description below. And I haven't tried all of them, but they're a good start. And believe me, it is just a start because new ones are popping up all the time. And then electives. Don't let any curriculum lock you in so that your kids aren't experiencing the fun of electives. Which brings me to my next tip. Tip number four, don't forget electives. I don't care if your kid is in high school or middle school or elementary school, electives are, in my opinion, one of the most important things that kids should do in any school setting. Because this is where they get to explore their own interests. Yes. I do personally believe that kids should try to learn the same stuff that kids in public school learn, to some degree, because these are the same kids that they'll be competing against to get into college or to get jobs. But I think that it's electives that really are crucial to their future. And there are so many options out there. Honestly, if I was in public or private school, I don't think that I would have been able to take electives like Japanese for the past four years, or sign language, or hospitality and tourism, or video production. At least, not at the schools near me. And electives are what make learning fun and get your kids excited for their future. It also makes them feel like they're in some control of what they're learning. Because let's face it, I wouldn't be taking algebra too if I didn't really have to. But electives like Japanese? That's entirely my choice. And that makes me feel more empowered and excited about learning. Tip number five, take field trips. Get out. Don't lock yourself to a desk or computer for eight hours a day doing school. Go to museums, go to historic monuments, dig up fossils, or just dig in the dirt and find nothing but bugs. Watch a local glass blower in their shop. Go to your state capital and see our government in action. Go to a stable and learn how they care for horses or go to a farm and see where that milk comes from. Go to a local creamery and learn how they make ice cream. Some restaurants will even let you visit their kitchens off hours if you get a group together for a field trip. Travel if you can, even if you're just going to the grocery store. I kid you not. That can be a field trip if that's all that's available. Check out the international food style, turn it into a lesson on a country you've maybe never heard of, or a place you've always wanted to visit. Go to a farmer's market or a plant shop, 
There are always places to have field trips, no matter where you are or what your budget is. But field trips are essential to getting kids in the habit of learning, no matter what they are doing. You don't want your kids to think that learning only happens behind a desk. Let me say that again. You don't want your kids to think that learning only happens behind a desk. Got it? Good. Now go have fun. Tip number six. Go to your library or at least see what services they offer online. Yes, this goes right along with the field trip idea. Libraries are full of opportunities. They have book clubs, lectures, story times for the little kids, and they even have some great classes. I even learned how to do stop motion animation at my library. But here's the biggest point of this tip. Libraries offer a whole lot more than you think. Not just stuff that you have to be there for, but things like foreign language learning apps and services, online tutoring, audiobooks, ebooks, all sorts of things you won't even believe. I get Rosetta Stone and BrainFuse online tutoring for free through my local library, saving me hundreds of dollars a year. So go there and talk to them or visit them online. Ask questions because I love my library. And what's funny is that most of what I use them for now that I'm a high schooler is all actually done online. Tip number seven, make a schedule. I know there are some unschoolers watching this that are priming your fingers right now to leave me some nasty comments. Please don't. First off, I'm not an unschooler, but I know a ton who are and who are doing it successfully. In fact, I'm going to do a vlog about it because that's something that I think a lot of people don't understand at all. But I personally think that everyone can benefit from keeping some kind of schedule. This doesn't mean you need to stick to it, but it's so gratifying to check things off of your list of things to do. And I think that it helps you in life because that's the way the world works, like it or not. You have to get a job, pay bills, pick kids up from places, all sorts of things that require a schedule. I'd go crazy without my schedule, even as flexible as we like to keep it, because it makes me feel in control. I don't need to go to my parents and ask them what they want me to do. There it is, in writing. And I get that sense of accomplishment when I finish things off. This tip might not be for everyone, but it's something to consider. And let's face it, you wouldn't have been listening to this vlog for this long if you weren't looking for some new ideas, right? Tip number eight. Don't think that all learning happens between the hours of eight and three on weekdays. I touched on this earlier a bit, but you don't want to train your kids into thinking that learning only happens under school-like circumstances. Field trips, reading magazines and books in free time, writing a, in a journal, even cooking are all learning experiences. Tip number nine, make your homeschool place pleasant and organized. That's because chances are your kids will be spending a lot of time there. So you don't want it to feel like torture. Surround them with things that get them excited. Like for me, I love to have my globe nearby because I love to travel. I love being surrounded by books and I even have lavender that is planted right outside my window so I can smell it in the springtime. At the same time, you want your space to be organized because you don't want your kids having to ask you every time they are looking for something. I think one of the key things about parenting is probably to get us independent, right? So start right now by making your kids homeschool place a place that they can feel in control and can easily put their hands on whatever they need to do their school day. Tip number 10, and this one's going to be controversial, incentivize learning. I know, I know, you might think that kids should just learn for the sake of learning, and some really might. So this might not be needed, or you might think that you shouldn't be rewarding your kids for something that they have to do anyway. But I think adding a little incentive really can help kids. It doesn't have to mean you pay them for every lesson they complete. Not at all. The incentive might be that when they finish their algebra course, they get to pick the next restaurant your family goes to. 
Or maybe the incentive is that if they pay attention to their online course, they can take their laptop outside and do it there. These are the kinds of things that can really help kids to get through those lessons they don't want to. Let's face it, most adults aren't going to work without the incentive of a paycheck. So incentives are a way of life. And any psychology class will tell you that positive reinforcement is much more powerful than negative reinforcement. So rather than yelling at a kid for goofing off when they should be doing their work, give them an incentive to stay on track. Tip number 11. Wait, do I do it like that? Last one is the biggest one, so listen up. Embrace change. The kids you are homeschooling today are different from the kids you homeschooled last year, or maybe even last month. Kids change constantly. It's what we do. So the things that worked last year might not be working anymore. The schedule that worked last year might not work this year. The curriculum or classes or even social circles that were such a hit last year might be the worst thing in the world for your kid now. Kids who don't like to write or read or do math or socialize might turn around and become exactly the opposite. So listen to your kids. Take cues from them as to what's working and what isn't. Be flexible. And above all, whenever possible, keep it fun. I hope these ideas help you make 2021 a great homeschooling year. If you have any ideas that might help other parents, please comment down below because I definitely don't know it all. Even though as a teen, I like to sometimes pretend I do. And please be sure to subscribe because it costs you nothing, but it helps you to promote my videos more. So thank you for doing it right now. Thanks for watching.